Aloha, my name is Nalan. I'm guest hosting today's Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program for my friend Mark Schklopf. Mark is currently on a combined family vacation and business trip in Asia. Our guest speaker today is my mentor, director, and a longtime friend of Mark, Ms. Christine Kubota, who is a practicing attorney in Hawaii with over 30 years of experience and expertise serving Japanese-speaking clients in Hawaii and from Japan. To address the needs of her clients, Chris provides bilingual legal services to individuals, families, investors, and businesses who have connections with Japan locally and who come from Japan to Hawaii. Her practice includes business, real property transaction, dispute resolution, immigration law, estate planning, and employment law matters. Chris has devoted her passion, positive energy, and leadership to our community by serving as chair of the Japanese Culture Center of Hawaii, Honolulu Japanese Chamber of Commerce, United Japanese Society, and the Pan Pacific Festival, where she continues to actively serve in addition to Hiroshima Kenjinka, U.S. Japan Council, Honolulu Japanese Chamber Charitable Corporation, Hawaii Senior Life, Wailai Country Club, and Japanese Women's Society Foundation. Chris will help us familiarize with common legal issues faced by Japanese-speaking clients, share with us her valuable insights on how professionals, including attorneys, uh, can better uh, serve Japanese-speaking clients and provide us with the do's and don'ts on business culture and etiquette 101 in Japan. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Na. So can you tell us more about your personal background and how you became an attorney in the first place? Okay, um, I am a foreign-born American, which means I was born and raised in Japan, and my father is from Hawaii. So uh, my father spoke to me in English, and my mother spoke to me in Japanese. So I was bicultural and bilingual from when I was a little girl. So I came to Hawaii uh, when I graduated high school because there was an immigration law that said that all foreign-born Americans had to return to the United States before they were 27. So I came here where my grandfather was, my auntie was, this is where my father was born and raised, um, and went to college here. Um, and then after graduation from college, um, I became a travel agent, and um, I love to travel, so I took many of the local people to Asia and traveled. Uh, because I was bilingual, um, I started to help people that needed translation services, which included lawyers. And I started interpreting um, at depositions or at meetings with attorneys. And um, almost, well, not almost, but a lot of cases that I helped, um, I ended up losing. And I didn't understand why um, these cases where Japanese um, investors were um, defrauded or they didn't understand the document and um, they couldn't get their money back and I didn't understand why they kept losing and so I asked one of the attorneys how come we keep losing and they said well if you want to know go to law school so um, at the age of 30 I decided maybe I should do this um, and I went back to law school um, on the mainland and got my degree and decided to come back and to help people and this is your 30 for, 31st yes, year practice. Congratulations. No, thank you. Before I know it, it's been 30 years. Um, it was uh, very scary for me at the beginning um, because um, I was going to school with all these young, smart people when I went back to law school. Um, but the goal was, I just want to make sure, I'm a business lawyer. I always wanted to be a business lawyer. I was an entrepreneur after I graduated college. Um, I just want to make sure that everybody is treated fairly. And just because you don't understand the language, I don't think it's um, fair that um, uh, they're not on the same ground. So um, now um, it's very expensive. Litigation is very expensive. So so long as everybody knows um, that what uh, investment they're making, what the risks are, um, I think then it's a fair game. Can you share with us more about your practice areas and your law firm, our law firm? Yes, our law firm, uh, Damien Key. But, uh, we even have a book. Um, so our book, we have a book because we are, uh, we, we were established in 1964. Frank Damon, who has passed already, started this law firm with Henry Shigekane, who was from Hilo. Um, and he spoke only pidgin. And so, but he was accepted at Yale. And Frank and Henry met in, at Yale. And uh, the, we were, our firm is one of the first biracial firms in Honolulu. 
Um, and um, it was very difficult for Asian Americans to get a legal job back in those days. Um, and so I'm very proud of the fact that we started this um, multicultural environment for lawyers. Um, and uh, we're, we've been around for a long time. Um, my practice um, at Damon Key um, was to help Japanese nationals. So from day one, um, that was my job. Uh, because during the late 80s, it was during the Japanese bubble, so um, I helped a lot of investors come to Hawaii. Uh, they built a business. They bought hotels, golf courses, open restaurants, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I, I helped them to establish their company, make their investment, do their due diligence. Um, and then um, they, they would have HR issues, um, and then they would die. Um, and uh, the widows, uh, having never been to America, not understanding what their husbands were doing, um, not understanding what the board of directors were telling the widows to do, um, I thought maybe we needed to address that. So I started doing estate plan work as well. So now um, my practice encompasses not only business, not only immigration to bring them in, and not only HR and employment matters, but also estate plan. I see. So I read your resume, it's very impressive, and you served as board directors back in, even starting in 1998 on the worldwide affiliation of commercial law firms called Meritas. So what is Meritas? Uh, Meritas is a group of mid-sized firms, and we were one of the uh, founding firms. But we thought that we need to create an affiliation of law firms all over the world because our clients needed help, not just in our jurisdiction, but everywhere. So we now have, I think, um, 170 member firms and 7,000 lawyers we can go to. So as I was saying earlier in my career in the 80s and early 90s, I had clients that not only invested in Hawaii, but invested on the mainland, invested in Europe. So I could just make a call and say, hello, Sweden, are you there? Or hello, France, are you there? Or hello, New York, are you there? And I don't have to worry um, about uh, doing background work because everybody that goes and becomes a member of Meritas um, has been checked. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that we can rely on them and trust them. Um, and um, it was a, it's a very good network. So we've been with them from the very beginning. Yeah, it's wonderful. What are the common uh, legal issues faced by your client? Um, I think it depends on uh, the client. Um, I think there's three different categories. You're either a family type or a small business or a large business. So depending on the level of sophistication, I think it's different. But um, I think the biggest misconception is um, not just the culture, but Hawaii, I think, is very unique. Um, even if you do business in California or in New York, um, I think Hawaii is very different. So I think that's the biggest challenge um, and the biggest thing that um, all business people should understand that doing business in Hawaii is very unique. Yeah. Um, of course, legally, we're very different from the laws of Japan. Um, and so uh, things are done differently. Usually contracts in Japan are two pages long, maybe max five. Mm -hmm. uh, so when they see their uh, lease being 100 pages long and I ask them, did you read it? And they say, I don't read English. Then um, it's very difficult for them to understand why they have to read it and understand it. And um, I tell them that if something happens and if it's on page 36 and you later tell me that I didn't read it, then it would be bad. And they said, oh, I see. So it's very costly. You know, either you have to, I have to explain it to them or they have to get a translator or they have to get it translated. Um, so, but it's very, very important. Um, yeah. What are the most important things you need to remember when you help them resolve issues? Due diligence. Due diligence, due diligence. You, um, as I said earlier, it's just so expensive to litigate. So um, you just have to know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's uh, very important, even if you're just buying a condo. Uh, condos here in Hawaii are very expensive. 350000 maybe is, is a minimum amount. Um, but you have to read your um, condo bylaws, your declarations. I mean, it's very boring documentation. <laughs> Uh, but you have to have somebody read it. You don't necessarily, I mean, when I bought my condo, I didn't necessarily <laughs> read every page, but 
um, you should have a professional read it and understand it. If it isn't your realtor, and your realtor isn't responsible for it, but you should understand why there is a declaration, why there are bylaws, why there are rules and regulations, what you can do on your premises, what you cannot do on your premises. It's all there. So um, it's, um, that's I think, is important. I think you have to understand the rules of the game. For example, like insurance, mm -hmm. um, how important that is, why you need endorsements, why you should get endorsements, why you don't need endorsements, why you have to get title insurance, why you don't need to, why you have escrow. Um, things like that. I used to do a lot of seminars in Japan just explaining escrow because mm -hmm. Japan doesn't have escrow. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very surprised that Japan doesn't have escrow. And once you pay for a house, you can sometimes wait four days to close. And for me, that system is, is crazy. You know, once you give the money, why do you have to wait four days to get your house? I mean, it, to me, it's very, that's strange. But to them, it's like, who is escrow? Why am I paying them this money? What are they doing? You know, so um, I think it's just understanding um, the culture here, which I think is fair. I think it's good. Um, and your team of people, your insurance agent, your realtor, um, your lawyer, your accountant, um, tax laws always change. Um, a lot of people, for example, a lot of people call and say, oh, can I change um, the title of my house to my daughter? Sure, you can. Is that a sale or is that a gift? What? Can you just change the name? I said, you cannot. I mean, there's a consequence to everything you do, you know. And so um, can you just do that in Japan? And they think and they say, oh, you cannot. So I said, it's the same thing here. You know, when you rent an apartment, you know, do you, don't you pay tax on the income you make? Yeah. Oh, mm, yes. And I said, you have to do the same thing here. And, the, and they get very surprised. So it's, it's like paradise to them. Why is paradise to them? So. In paradise, you don't have to pay tax, maybe. <laughs> but that's not true. I mean, you know, they, they, they're on vacation. So um, it, it's just very different, I think. And so you just have to pick them up. Right. Yeah. So for uh, visitors and investors who are new to Hawaii, what helpful uh, tips uh, you have for, to help them reduce or avoid uh, any disputes or getting into trouble here? I think um, Hawaii is a consultant um, mm -hmm. state. Um, I think you just have to find the right consultants, you know, you have to, um, I don't think you need a lot of consultants, but I think um, a few good ones will always help. Um, tax is always an issue, so I think a good CPA, um, somebody you can trust. Um, if you end up living here, I think um, you should have a good doctor, um, a good um, support system. Um, if your kids are in school, you need somebody to have, pick up your kids if you can't go. I think that's important. Um, it's just, it's like anywhere else. You just have to have a good support system, I think. Mm -hmm. um, lawyers and, are good only because um, it's just so expensive if something happens. Um, uh, if, for example, if you own a business and um, the lights go out because of some electrical problem and you want to blame your landlord, you can't, you know, your shop has to close down. Um, there are no lies. The cash, cash register doesn't work. You don't make any money. You have to close the shop and you want to sue your landlord. You cannot. The lease will say if the lights go out, you cannot sue your landlord. But if you didn't read your lease, you know, so things like that, you know, it's I just, see. yeah. Uh, so uh, what is, uh, well, congratulations. I heard that the Japanese Culture Center of Hawaii will be honoring you at the upcoming 2019 <laughs> Vivian the Aloha Spirit Gala. Uh, so you definitely actively involved in our community, you know, mm -hmm. had a lot of commitment to uh, depending the cross-cultural relationship between Japan and Hawaii. Uh, can you tell us more about the community associations, sure, the organizations sure, sure, sure. you're involved in? Um, it all started because um, one of my um, bosses at work, when I was an associate, um, one of the directors um, needed a date to go to these uh, uh, Japanese American functions, these nonprofit organizations. So I went with him and I ended up meeting a lot of interesting people. And that was with the Japanese Chamber of Commerce. And um, it, that is a business organization, but it's more than that. I think it's a place where you can meet a lot of um, local businesses and local people and um, different types of businesses. So if I needed a dentist or a painter or you know, it was a great place to just meet people for everyday things. So I just got to, I just really got along with everybody. 
And before I knew it, I was in different committees and um, I participated a lot and um, I became the chair there. Um, from there, it was kind of like a, I don't know, it was kind of like a virus, I guess. Um, I just thought giving back to the community mm -hmm. was something I really liked doing. Mm -hmm. Um, I liked um, helping seniors. Um, I liked helping children. Um, I liked helping students, um, especially those that were interested in the Japanese culture. Mm -hmm. um, I thought because of my bilingual and bicultural background, I thought maybe, you know, um, people wanted me to help and see if, how much I could, you know, teach the kids um, about Japan. Um, back in those days, you know, people didn't go to Japan as readily as they do now. Mm -hmm. um, so just talking about Japan and talking about the food, I would go to the senior care home and talk about the bentos. I mean, that kind of thing was just very easy for me. It was some, simple. It was just my time. Um, and then I was chair for the Culture Center, and the Culture Center has just wonderful um, things at their, um, at, their gay, uh, at their museum. And um, I learned so much about my own grandfather, my own grandmother. Um, there's a, they have a beautiful library that you can do your own research, and I just, it's just so deep. Um, and you kind of find out your roots, you kind of find out why you are, how, because, you know, you find out who you are by reading about what they did and what they did for you. Um, so I just got very interested in that. This year, um, I'm being honored with a variety of people like Alan Wong and Alan Oshima um, and the youth. Um, baseball team, softball team. I'm, so it's, it's really a, a, a hodgepodge of people, but I think they all in their own way gave to the community and um, were leaders in what they did. So I think it's, I'm really thankful that I'm um, being honored with them. Um, and it'll be fun because there'll be all these little uh, softball kids, you know. I um, see. We'll okay. learn a little bit about baseball, right. I think. Okay, so we'll have a short break due to the commercial and come back. Thank okay. you. Aloha, I'm Lauren Pear host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you'd go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. <laughs> Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming. Salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Welcome back to our Law Across the Sea program. Today we have Christine Kubota, practicing attorney with 30 years of experience connecting Hawaii and Japan in her practice. Uh, so Christine, you probably need to work with a lot of professionals in Japan, you know, as a collaboration to serve your clients. So how do the professionals like practice there, like attorneys in Japan uh, was in comparison with here? What are the differences? Um, the law generally is different. Um, so there are very many differences. Um, the bar here, the Hawaii State Bar Association here and the Bar Association in Japan work together. Um, so we travel back and forth, a bunch of lawyers go back and forth and we do joint seminars so we mm -hmm. can learn from each other. Um, every year we have different topics that we learn from. Um, the CPAs, the Certified Public Accountants also organizations come and uh, we share that. Uh, we do uh, visits with their courts, they mm -hmm. do visits with our courts. So we have a pretty good relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we do a lot of like programs. Um, uh, realtors probably come. Uh, Japan didn't have a jury system until recently. So when they first, they wanted to learn. So they came and um, they asked uh, the judges here about how the jury system works here. Um, things like that. We collaborate a lot. 
Um, I think two years ago, we have a very um, intense tax uh, four-day seminar here that we've been, we've been holding for many, many years with many uh, judges from the mainland and many lawyers from the mainland coming. Um, it's a four-day tax seminar, but we just started to make it bilingual. So we have a one-day seminar with Japanese CPAs and attorneys that attend. So it's become very international, I think. Um, mm -hmm. all, there's not just Japanese, but many people from all over the world invest in Hawaii. So I think we're, everybody's concerned about, um, about cross-cultural issues. Mm -hmm. um, so um, it's kind of a great place for all of us to meet and discuss things. So Japan is also a very popular destination for our people in Hawaii. <laughs> so for individuals uh, who want to go to Japan to visit or for businesses who want to make an investment there, do you have some general good advice for them or some do's and don'ts they should be aware of before they spend their money? Well, um, when I was at the chamber, we used to have seminars on how you're supposed to bow and how you're supposed to give your business cards and uh, don't forget your omiyage, right? So how you're supposed to be wrapping things. So I think those things um, are basics. I think there are a lot of books on it. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the community colleges have classes on it. So if you don't know anything, I think it's good to read through the basics. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I think it's, if it's business, I think the Japanese business people are very sophisticated. So, um, and obviously I think most of the time you're gonna be speaking English. Um, so it's not a necessity that you speak the language. Um, and they're very, um, they're very um, courteous. And so I, don't, I think you just have to go with the flow. And I think it just depends on who you're dealing with. But I think the basics are, um, the business and the bowing and things like that. Where to sit, I think, is another issue that a lot of people ask me about. Mm -hmm. um, and um, just know, again, just like when they come here, I think you just need to know who the consultants should be, who you should be speaking with. I think double checking everything just because one person says so. I mean, there's bad people everywhere, I think. Um, you just have to be careful. Um, so if you don't, if you cannot find anybody at, at your destination, I think you should find somebody here that will know somebody there that you trust, that you can at least kind of uh, bounce off some ideas. Mm -hmm. um, because if you're going to be investing a lot of your time and energy as well as money, um, I think it's important that you invest some time and money with you know, somebody you can rely on. Yeah. Yeah. So for working professionals like attorneys uh, serving Japanese clients here or serving any clients with a Japanese connection, how do we improve our services to our clients? Mutenashi, right? I mean, that's, uh, that's um, the Olympic slogan, but Japanese people are um, born to serve in a way. I mean, it's like, and they need immediate um, attention. That's just the way they are. Um, so a week is too long. Um, and so it's very difficult um, for Americans to understand that when they ask, oh, is it done yet? Is it done yet? Um, it's not done yet, <laughs> but they need to get things done right away, especially if they're from the city. Um, they think that, um, that they're fo you're focused on them. And so you have to, um, the least you can do is give them notice that, okay, I will do this. It will take three days. So I'll get back to you in three days. And now, so if you, if you can't get back in three days, you have to be courteous and say on the second day, I'm sorry, I can't get it done by the third day, so can you give me two more days? Mm -hmm. um, so that's, I think, is, is very key. Um, it's just that they're very fast-paced, and Hawaii is very slow-paced. So the first thing I t teach them is Hawaiian time. Um, and not that it's good or anything, but it's just that people are um, not as on top of it, perhaps, um, as they are used to. Mm -hmm. um, and things take a little bit more time, mm -hmm. you know, so um, that's something that I think is really important. Um, omotenashi is a, is a feeling, um, I'm sure you've gone to Japanese restaurants, right? Yes. I mean, you know, so it's like they will think way ahead of you, you know, so if you are eating sashimi, then they have to make sure that the correct shoyu is there, and it's the shoyu for the sashimi and not the shoyu for the other thing or whatever. I mean, it's just go way ahead of you that um, that they're thinking, so they expect you are thinking that way too, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so it's kind of like a game. You have to like think ahead, think ahead, think ahead, and see you know, um, who's winning, <laughs> um, which is hard, um, especially when you, have to, when you need time to do research, and, and law is not black and white, you know? So um, 
And they know that, but it's just you have to be very specific and tell them that um, if I had a magic wand, everything mm -hmm. would be wonderful, but I don't have a magic wand. Um, but it's better safe than sorry, so um, it's always good to double check. I think. Mm -hmm. So you must have a lot of trips, uh, you know, back to Japan. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us some uh, interesting ones or the most memorable ones that strikes? Well, out? I don't know. Um, I go maybe three to four times a year. Um, the funniest thing was I, I had a client that came to see me many, many times. He loved Hawaii. He had many businesses here, and he would come to visit my office all the time. Um, as I said earlier, they're in the, in, they're in the vacation mode, right? So... Mm -hmm. Uh, they're in com they're coming shorts and slippers and t-shirts. We would have business meetings, blah blah blah. So I would visit the one time. The first time I went to visit him in Japan, and I met him in my hotel lobby, and I'm looking for him, looking for him. Can I find him? I'm thinking, where is he? Where is he? I know him. I've met him like a million times. And then here's this dude in a three-piece suit, you know, with this necktie and a little chief thing here, and. I'm looking at him and going, is that you? <laughs> and I'm thinking, wow, what happened to you? And of course, when he's in his own background, he's like this totally different businessman, yeah. you know? And, and no wonder he's, you know, a successful businessman because and he has like five secretaries with him, you know? <laughs> and so, you know, it reminded me that, you know, these men are successful, right? So mm -hmm. kind of weird. But that was one of the funniest things. Another one was, you know, uh, immigration is a very heartwarming um, right. area of practice, as you know. Yes. Yeah. And it really, really, I really love doing it. Yeah. It really changes somebody's life, you know, so I, I hope I can continue to. And I'm so glad you joined us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah. So I think... Uh, Thank you so much for your time, and uh, we've learned a lot today, and I'm definitely looking forward to visit Japan. You know, yes. that's on my agenda next yes. year. So exciting. And thank you so much, uh, everybody, for listening to our show today. And uh, we'll be back in two weeks, and Mark will be back. Uh, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to have Christine here today. Thank you. And uh, thank you, everybody.